We have seen so many members of the RSS as notable political leaders, media persons, policy makers, etc., including our present Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We hear of it time and again, but what exactly is the RSS? RSS, or the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, is a voluntary non governmental organization, the largest of its kind in the world. It is known to have a membership of 5 to 6 million people. It runs shakhas or branches all over India, the number varying from 40 to 50,000. Although not a political party, it is an open secret that it has major influence over political parties and in shaping Indian politics. The RSS shares its ideology and interests with many organizations such as the BJP, EBVP, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Bajrang Dal, and even the Muslim Rashtriya Manch. These are often collectively called the Sangh Parivar. Though RSS maintains that any Indian who lives by the Hindu view and way of life is welcome to be its member, its following is largely Hindu. The Hindutva ideology is core to this organization and is the driving force behind it. So how does a typical Shakha work? There are regular meets, members exercise together, sing patriotic songs and discuss national events and issues. This arrangement brings members together and reinforces nationalist sentiment. Now how and why was it started? By the early 1900s, India was brewing with communal tension between Hindus and Muslims. Indians were increasingly being influenced by Western culture. So at such a time, in 1925, Keshav Baliram Hedgevar, a member of the Indian National Congress, founded the RSS. The goal of the RSS, as it remains today, was to protect the culture and the interests of Hindus and provide selfless service to the nation. In a country where tension between Hindus and Muslims has existed for a long time, RSS has presented itself as a major power from the Hindu front. So what meaning does this hold in a secular country like India? For RSS, being pro-Hindu has come at the cost of having to stand up against the Indian Muslim community which stands at 14.2%. From having had a prominent member like M.S. Goldbarkar, who openly endorsed Adolf Hitler and his ideology of race purity, to Nataram Godse, a member responsible for Gandhi's assassination, RSS has been shrouded with controversy since its very conception. It has been in the news for the controversial conversion of non-Hindus to Hindus, also known as Gharbapsi, lauded as an apparent response to love jihad. It has earned itself a regressive, violent, non-secular and extremist image for often resorting to alleged acts of communal violence and unlawful moral policing. From the infamous Gotra riots, which resulted in more than 1,000 casualties, to the demolition of Babri Masjid in Ayodhya, the RSS has allegedly had a major role to play in many such cases. According to the report of the Liberal Commission, the blame or the credit for the entire temple construction movement at Ayodhya must necessarily be attributed to the Sangh Parivar. In spite of this reputation, how does RSS enjoy such great support from large groups across the country? In the wake of minority favoritism for vote banks and communal threats from non-Hindu groups, a large number of Hindus feel the need for a power like RSS to favour and protect their interests. Because of its tremendous reach and ability to mobilise resources quickly, RSS Swayam Sevaks have helped the government in times of crisis. They have been looked upon as a dependable and patriotic group for their volunteer work during the Sino-Indian War of 1962, the Indo-Pakistan War of 1965 and the Bangladesh War of 1971 and also during natural calamities like the recent flood in Kashmir. They also played a major role in the decline of untouchability and the caste system, gaining appreciation from both Gandhi and Ambedkar. So, is RSS a violent and extremist organisation whose actions and motives should be questioned? Or is it a necessary evil to protect and preserve the cultural heritage of this nation? Is it undertaking humanitarian work just to cover up all the violence that it is accused of? Or is it truly a nationalist organization, providing selfless service to the nation? The answers to all these questions may be debatable, but what we all can agree on is the undeniable power and influence of this organization.